Hello again. In this tutorial, we're going to go right back to basics in that we're going to take an image of the moon using a webcam and the SharpCap software. Um, now, obviously, I'm going to have to do it virtually because I haven't got a telescope in here and everything and I haven't got the moon. Um, so there'll be a couple of props involved, but everything will still follow and you'll be able to understand exactly what's going on. Uh, the first thing that we're going to need is the webcam. Now, this is one of my long exposure modified webcams. Uh, the main difference is that because I'm doing this virtually, I've got the normal lens screwed into it where you would have your adapter screwed in and the camera connected up to a telescope. Now also for this tutorial, bear in mind that you need to have your switch on the bottom in non-LX mode. That's important because it, a few people have made exactly that mistake. They've, they've had the switch in the wrong position for the wrong mode. So you need to be in non-LX mode. Now when you're in sharp cap, there is a way to just check that you're in non-LX mode, which we'll cover shortly. Uh, another prop that I'm going to be using is an image of the moon because we don't actually have the moon here. Um, and that's about it basically for this part. So you'll be wanting to you know, have your camera plugged in into your USB port. You don't need the, the serial port connected up because we're not doing long exposure we're just doing normal webcam mode moon captures using sharp cap and so let's go on to the next bit okay we've now got our sharp cap program launched and we're going to go through methodically each setting um, completely ignore what it shows for the moment in your preview screen because uh, we'll work through that as we go along um, but the first thing you want to be doing is if you go up to file and click file here is where you set your capture folder. Now this is the folder that it's going to save your ABIs to. I just prefer to make a folder on my desktop and call it say moon or just give it a di the date um, and you know just so I can keep a track of exactly where I am. Um, so that's the first thing, make sure that you've set up your, your capture folder. The next thing is cameras and here I'm going to select Philips SPC 900 and see because that's obviously the camera that I'm using. Uh, if you're using a different sort of camera then obviously just choose your camera from the cameras list. Um, next we're going to go to options. Now on options you want to be looking at video capture filter and what that is is it's your driver settings for your actual camera and there's a couple of things that you just want to make sure are set in this. Um, now for me the first thing is flickerless image is off, face tracking obviously is off, Digital zoom is off, picture enhancer is off. Now obviously depending on what driver you've got installed and what program you will have different sorts of settings but these if you like there are the cosmetic settings that you don't want you don't need they'll just interfere with your imaging um, so all of them should be off or disabled. Um, in the picture section your frame rate you should be looking at 10 frames per second uh, that's the normal sort of capture rate for, for doing sort of uh, astro imaging. Now this is very important, auto exposure should be off. The reason being that if you if you have auto exposure turned on, every time that you try and do some settings in SharpCap, the camera will try and compensate and, and mess your settings up and everything. So auto exposure always should be off. Uh, shutter speed and gain, you can ignore that because you will be able to set it in SharpCap. Now auto white balance, this wants to be on really. Um, it's, it, it just helps things along, uh, you know, so don't disable that. That's the only one that should be enabled, really. Um, as for any brightness and contrast and saturation settings, again, just ignore them. Um, black and white, obviously you want off because you're not taking mono images. Backlight compensation, turn that off. Mirror, you don't want that, again, turn that off. Uh, and then there's an audio tab, which you really don't need because we're not interested in audio at this point. So that's our camera basically now set up. Um, ignore completely what it shows in the preview screen for the moment because we still haven't finished putting out the proper settings in and, and how we want everything. So next we're going to move over to this section uh, which is the sharp cap settings. Now the first thing to be doing is looking at colour space compression. Now for this you're wanting Y2 which is YUY2. Uh, so I'll set that to that. Your frame rate, see it here again, now it's saying 30 frames, we don't want that, we actually want 10, 10 frames per second, um, and stick with 10 frames per second for the time being, um, you know, when conditions are absolutely perfect, you can actually go to 5 frames per second, but as a default, keep it at 10 frames per second. Now your resolution, for this we want the maximum for this camera, which is 640 by 480. 
So we set 640 by 480, and you'll now see that your preview screen has grown. Um, in, obviously, unless it was already set there. Now then, we're going to ignore the top couple of settings at the moment, which are exposure and gain. We're going to just have a look at these ones below. Now, for backlight compensation, that should be all the way to the left because we don't want it. Uh, color enable, that should be all the way to the right. That is basically a, an on and off switch more than anything else. It's either in color or it's not. So that, again, is way over to the right. Now, your gamma, I always prefer to leave this right in the middle. So keep that slider in the middle, your gamma. Uh, later on, as you get more advanced, you can try messing about and putting different settings in. But for the time being, leave your gamma right in the middle. Now, saturation, I actually prefer to have that very, very slightly over to the right. It just adds a little bit more colour to your images um, and, and helps a bit when you get to the processing stage. Um, you know, you just, it just gives me a little bit more to, to work with. I'm just happier with the saturation, just up that little bit. Uh, contrast and brightness, again, I leave completely at 50%. I don't bother touching those at all. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is to point our telescope at our image, which in this case is going to be the moon. Now, as you can see, we've got a very blurred image of the moon there, and it's, it's also it's dark. So what I do is, firstly, I put my gain into the middle at about 50%, like so. And next, I use my exposure control, and it's almost like a, a course adjustment, if you like, on the exposure. Now, don't try and copy these exact settings when you were doing your own Im imaging. Find your own settings, because obviously, different light levels and everything, I'm actually doing this uh, in, in the office. Uh, so my light levels are completely different than what will, they will be in your case. But when I adjust this, what I like to do is to get it just under the level of brightness that I'm actually looking to see on my screen, which in this case, with it all the way up, it's, it's you know, that's it, it's just under. Next, the gain control. And we're using this as a fine control more than anything else. Just take it up until you've got a modicum of brightness there. Now, we're going to come back to these in a moment because, as you can see, we're out of focus. Now, with all your imaging, focus is the single most important thing to get right. Spend five minutes on it, spend ten minutes on it, spend half an hour on it even. But your focus is very, very important. Bad focus you just can't fix later. It's, you know, you're screwed, basically. Um, so take your time with your focusing just to get it right. So that's what we're going to do next. We're just going to focus up on the moon. And there we are. We're nicely focused up on our moon. And so we're on to the next stage, which is we come back now to our gain and, and, and we just tweak it that little bit just to get something that we're happy with. Um, so you know, we're up way too bright. But tweak it to something that you're happy with. Now what you want to be looking at is these white areas, if I just tweak that gain up a little bit, these white areas now are washed out. You've got too much gain there. So just back that gain off a little bit, like so, until those washed out white areas are just nice. You know, you can nicely see them. Don't start thinking that your darker areas will be too dark in your image. It's a lot easier to improve a dark image than it is to, to improve a washed out image because basically when it's washed out, you've lost that detail. It's just burnt out. Um, you know, if you're under gained a little bit, that detail still there just needs bringing up. It's, it's not been burnt out. So I would say that it's about probably right um, at that point. And now what we can do is we can actually start taking a capture. So what we would do at this point is move to Start Capture and click on there. Now it will ask you um, to set a capture limit. This is actually a really good feature of SharpCap. I prefer to use number of frames for my captures. Now you will alter your, your number of frames for different subjects and we'll give you a brief explanation of why. For the moon, I actually prefer to use 2000 frames. Um, that will give you a really, it's just a good number of frames to use for the moon. Now if you're imaging something like Jupiter, Jupiter spins at quite a fast rate. And if you take too many frames or you take too long, you want to get what they call rotation errors. Which means that because that planet is actually rotating um, fairly fast in the case of Jupiter, 
if you take too many frames it's going to have rotated a little bit between your first one and your second one and it will cause you blurring so if you're imaging Jupiter in that case I would use maybe about 1300 frames so anyway as we said we're on the moon with this one so 2000 frames once we've selected 2000 just click OK and that's it Sharp Cap will now start taking our frames uh, as you can see on the bottom right here it says frames left and it's counting down um, at this point you can you know it's, if you're confident enough to leave your scope tracking and everything you can go in and put the kettle on or you know do anything you want to really you don't have to sit there freezing cold uh, watching this countdown um, and that's basically it once it's got to the 2000 it'll tell you you know it's done just click OK and you will have your AVI there now next I'm going to show you a typical AVI taken with sharp cap just to give you an idea of what you should be actually looking for on your screen and how your moon should be looking so we'll be back in a moment right this is a, a live capture uh, using sharp cap and the webcam connected up to the telescope and everything uh, it just gives you an overall idea of the sort of image that you should be seeing and the, and the lighting settings and everything uh, and the level of contrast um, and that is taken on a particularly good night so the quality is rather good uh, but there's no reason whatsoever why you shouldn't be expecting to get that sort of image quality on your captures and that's about it really so once again thanks for watching